Hi everyone, we are going to be going through our evidence for chemical change lab today. So on your lab guide, as we go through right, any place where we need to make an observation, there's a little room for us to write. So we'll be writing our observations there. So um, I've done a few things to get us started. The first thing is I've gotten a beaker of water and I've put it on the hot plate. And so that is warming up right now. You can tell the hot plate's on because of the light. Uh, I have also obtained a test tube and I've made some marks on that test tube and those are gonna be my guide marks for adding the um, different solutions. So that is ready to go. Uh, safety wise, I have my goggles on because some of the solutions that I'm working with are um, a little bit toxic. So first one can cause chemical burns. This one um, is a little bit toxic both to people. Um, copper ions are toxic to people and to to sulfate to the first mark on the test tube. Now before we do that, let me just explain, right? There is something on this besides copper two sulfate, it says one mole decimeter to the negative three. That means one mole per cubic decimeter. So that's a unit of, con of um, concentration. And what it's saying is if I had a cubic decimeter of the solution, right, a whole liter of it, that would contain one mole of copper sulfate. So it's a way to for me to know sort of how much stuff is in um, that solution. So um, when you go to answer the question on the back of the page, uh, question number one, that's what it's referring to. Your answer is right there in um, step three of the procedure. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this and add it to the test tube up to the first mark using a little dropper pipettes. There we go. The copper two sulfate is in there. And that has um, a characteristic color, right? Copper ions tend to be either um, a little blue like that or they're um, blue green. So um, the Statue of Liberty is blue green in color. It's made of copper and over time the copper metal has um, turned into copper compounds uh, because of exposure to the environment and so we see those different colors there. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is add, this is step four, the sodium hydroxide to the test tube. And when I did that, um, it's kind of hard to see, but the uh, mixture in the test tube went from being clear and transparent um, to cloudy and kind of chunky looking. Right? So what has happened is a precipitate has formed. Remember those? That precipitate is a solid that forms when you mix together different solutions. So you mix that up, right? And you can definitely see it's not clear and transparent anymore. You can't see that glass stirring rod that I'm putting in there. It's all chunky. So um, observation then for number four, um, in terms of temperature, I can touch the, the base of that and it, it feels maybe a tiny bit cooler than it did to begin with. So temperature's going down a little bit. And then my other observation is that I have the formation of a precipitate and the color of that precipitate, um, let's see if we can zoom in on that. The color of that precipitate is a little bit lighter blue um, than the original solution. Um, but it still has a blue color, but more of a blue-green color. All right, next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this test tube and I am going to put it into the hot water bath. And I am going to let it rest in there for um, a couple of minutes until that water boils and I'll be back when that happens. Okay, so maybe three or four minutes have passed and wow, a really dramatic change has occurred. So I no longer have that pretty blue precipitate 
Now I have kind of just a gunmetal gray, almost black precipitate. Um, not nearly as pretty as what I had before. But one thing I can see is, um, is that the, uh, that precipitate is settling out of solution. It's starting to form layers. So that's where the term precipitate comes from, right? If you let it sit around long enough, it will settle out. It, the solid will settle out and leave a clear layer on top. So kind of like precipitation settles out of the sky. Okay, we need to cool this for um, a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna put this in a cool water bath, um, just like a hot water bath, but this time cool water. And I will be back shortly. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes and the contents of the test tube is cooled. We can even see a more distinctive layer um, of that precipitate. So um, we can definitely see it's clear up above. All right, so continuing on, we want to do the next step, which is add some hydrochloric acid to the um, tube. Okay, so there's my hydrochloric acid. And, ooh, it looks like it's starting to clear up in there a little bit. Let me stir. And um, definitely starting to clear up a little bit. And I'm also seeing a little blue color return. And just a few specks of black. Now those final specks are going away. And yay, all of that um, not very attractive. Black precipitate is gone, and I have, again, um, a clear blue solution. So almost as pretty as it was originally, but not quite as blue. Okay, so the changes that we observe in number seven is, oh, I'm sorry, that's number six, um, was that the black precipitate disappeared um, and the solution went clear and blue. All right, now we're moving on to number seven. And for that, I need a piece of aluminum wire. And so that's what I have here. Um, it looks just like what you would expect, some silvery wire, um, same color as like aluminum foil, but in wire form. And I've wrapped it around a stirring rod just to give it a little, um, a little twist. And I'm gonna put that into the solution. And let's see what happens. If we zoom in there, you definitely see two things happening. All right, one of those things is there are bubbles forming. Little bubbles are forming on the surface of the wire, and then they're um, you know rising up to the top. And then the other thing I notice is that wire has gone from being shiny and silvery to um, kind of brown looking. So let's take a closer look at that wire. Let's pull it out for a second. Right. And you can definitely see that it's um, changed color. And when I look at the color of the material on that wire, it's kind of looking a little bit like, a, um, like an old penny. Not a bright, shiny new penny, but an old one. And when I compare it to a piece of copper wire, I can see that there's some similarities in color. Um, so that deposit on the wire is looking like it has a copper color to it. So maybe, just maybe, what we're doing is pulling some of those copper ions out of solution and changing them from copper two plus ion back into copper metal. So I'm gonna let this go for a little while and we'll come back and look at it again in a few minutes. All right, so we're back and it's been about four or five minutes. And so what I'd like you to notice is that um, the wire has gotten really furry looking. That brown deposit is really starting to build up. And then the other thing I'd like you to notice is that the solution um, is not nearly as blue as it used to be. It's almost colorless. 
Um, so that tells me that most of those blue copper two ions um, are no longer there, right? So they had to go somewhere. So it's probably that they've turned into copper metal. Now watch this because it's kind of cool. So I'm gonna just give a little shake to this wire. All right, and notice what's happening. It's kind of hard to see. I mucked everything up, but um, there's all right. The um, aluminum wire down below is still there, uh, and I have a lot of that brown deposit. And then in the test tube, you can see um, all that brown deposit orange brown has collected down in the bottom there. Okay, so um, that's our last observation for that. Oh, I think I'm supposed to do a temperature change there too, and this got very warm, All right? So the temperature uh, increased there. Um, and then for number eight, record your observations compared to the copper from the sample, All right? So there um, are some similarities in color. Um, both of them have some sort of orangey colors to them. Okay, so um, that's our data. And then um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, questions here. So when you look at the back page, right on question number four, what you're going to be doing is for each of the chemical reactions that we observed, you're going to be writing a balanced equation. And so the first thing we did was we mixed together the copper two sulfate and the sulfur hydroxide. So um, on the top line, I'd like for you to write the word equation. So what are the new compounds that were formed, right? And you don't have to guess or, um, or um, deduce it yourself. It's actually spelled out in the procedure. So that was the first mixing we did. And so when I go to question number four here, right, it actually tells me that the two products for that mixing in the test tube are copper two hydroxide and sodium sulfate. So what I'll write as the completion of my word equation is copper two hydroxide plus sodium sulfate. And then I can go ahead and write the balanced equation, All right? And you can get that same information for all of the mixings that we did um, to help you write those equations. And then the other questions are just kind of having you think about um, what you observed. All right, so I'll leave you there and have a great day.